Yeah. We're well acquainted with Mr. Snodgrass and his accusations at the Bureau. Look, there are a lot of bad guys out there, and we want to encourage people to report any suspicious activity. It's the right thing to do. The problem, of course, is that at the same time, when you encourage people who are reluctant, you also encourage people who already want to do the right thing, who want to go out looking for and sometimes finding suspicious activity all around them. We expect that. It's the price of greater vigilance. We already have eyes everywhere, but they're useless if we don't know what to look for. We need the American people to play their part and speak up if they see something odd. We want a responsive and engaged citizenry. But there are some negatives that go along with that. Some people are always going to think they see more than others. There are no records indicating that the Holy Remakers own anything other than the land they live on. They haven't broken any laws. They don't even leave their property. If we cleared the woods of every two-bit shady sex cult in Granola Group, we'd run out of jail cells pretty quick. I say let them rot where they are. We have actually followed up and investigated some of his tips and allegations, but nothing panned out. You can't ignore some of the stuff he says, even if it's outlandish. I personally led a team to go investigate some Darvo Sutra pet food company out east because Snodgrass had convinced enough people that they lacked any records of purchasing enough meat to put out as much kibble as they do out of such a small factory. Now, this company was still purchasing a lot of other ingredients that maybe could be used for a bomb, and the country was on high alert. So, I was sent out to check things out, pull records, search the premises, just in case. It's become routine in these cases nowadays, but Snodgrass wasn't worried about that. His concern was that some preservative they were now using would turn cats and dogs against their owners into rabid killing machines. That was crazy, but somehow he mentioned enough details about these discrepancies to the right person at the Bureau. It turned out the place was family run and had been doing pretty well when the owner died about a year ago and left it to his wife who put her sons in charge. The sons obviously didn't know what they were doing. The records were in disarray. So they might have been looking at some tax code violations, but there was nothing criminal or nefarious going on, just mourning and neglect. The place was struggling already, and I don't think that a government investigation shutting it down for a day helped matters. They were closed and gone soon after that. I think that guy Snodgrass owes that family and their employees at least an apology. I don't think he even cares. He thinks he saved lives and he blames us for tipping the family off. The balls. We're trying to do a very difficult job here. There are a lot of really bad guys all over the world who hate us, who have a lot of resources and clever plans to kill us. And so I don't have time for the fake ones. Some people, I guess, just can't deal, you know? Reality is too scary, too stark, too complicated and overpowering. Maybe it's comforting to think that you have some grasp on it all. That even if you're powerless to stop it, you might at least understand it, put it in a box, explain it. The reality is that nothing is so neat and tidy. The lines between the bad guys and the fake good guys just aren't as clear as he'd like them to be. Sometimes that's just how the system works. There are always going to be cracks. And you've got to expect, sometimes people will fall through and people will get hurt. <laughs>